guys, welcome back. Uh, so we've had a few comments of people requesting to have a tour of our bus. So we thought it's raining outside right now, so it's the perfect time to clean the bus. Clean the bus and get a tour going for you guys. Even though we do live in a schoolie, it's not really our focus, focal point of, of our YouTube channel. Um, this is temporary, but it has a good story with it. Three years ago, I got myself out of debt and was working a high paying job that had a lot of um, sacrifice. And I got myself out of debt, I bought a school bus, and I spent, ev in 2017 I spent probably every second of my free time working on the school bus, which was very little because I was working in a work camp up in Northern Canada. But, <clears throat> I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants, which is what we do on a regular basis anyway up here. But um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, whether I was going to travel in the bus or if I was going to find a place to put it. And then I had a friend mention that there was a property that he had a friend trying to sell. And and we should mention this was very early on in our relationship, which yes. is why you're talking about what you were going to do. Me, <laughs> yes. Actually, I bought the bus before Katie uh, and I were in a relationship. We, we were just roommates at the time and maybe we'll make a video on that someday. But um, yeah, so I built this bus for me. I was getting ready to, to just live life differently. I had a huge amount of money in my bank account at, at the time and I could have went and bought a house, like put a down payment on a house, but I knew that that wasn't the life I wanted to live. So um, I built the bus and uh, here we are. Friend. Let's get going. Yep. <laughs> so come on in our boot room. So because this is connected, obviously, this is a stationary bus. We don't move it anywhere. Um, this is our home for now. It's on wheels, but it's not going anywhere. Though the nice thing is, if there is ever a forest fire, we could get out of here pretty quick with everything, pretty much. So yeah, this is the bus. I mean, this is the uh, boot room. Uh, we've got a washer. Uh, it works great. Run it off the sun. It's, uh, it's actually not that bad of a power draw, considering it's a washer. Obviously we can't have a electric dryer here, but we're gonna have a, a gas powered one in our new home. This is our storage area. As you can see, like eggs, junk, cleaning stuff. It's easy for this place to get completely dirty. And we actually have a freezer that we're uh, cleaning up so that we can have, run a freezer in here too. I bought a nice fridge uh, and one or two months out of warranty, it broke on me. So now we have a not nice fridge, but it keeps our stuff in here. And the few things that we need to keep cold, it's working right now. Katie and I hate it, but it is what it is. This is our stove for our new home. And uh, I'll put a link to the video that we made on this right here. <laughs> So one of the biggest problems people have in a bus conversion is how do I close my door? Because it's it's a difficult door to try to deal with. And I had a quick idea that I implemented in like, what was it, 15 minutes? So I was like, how are we gonna close this thing? Well, put a doorknob on it. This is the old lock me mechanism here. And it's actually really easy to install a doorknob in here. You just have to take a grinder, widen that out a little bit so you can get a doorknob in, take the old lock out, and then uh, this pin slides up here and into here. And I don't think I've seen many other people with their schoolies do that. But it works like hot darn. And uh, yeah, come on in. So right here we've got a bench and underneath we have our firewood storage for in the winter. We used to have the original bus seat, but it was, you know, it had the back going up to about here and it was really awkward. We just ended up putting stuff on it and it was kind of a mess. So we put this bench in and it's been awesome. Hinto loves to lay here and look out the window. Sometimes he rests his head on the steering wheel. Super cute. Sometimes he beeps the horn too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a good boy, isn't he? Yes. So then coming over here, we've got a table, side table, and we also have storage underneath. 
This used to be our food storage completely, but the fridge broke, and so we kind of shifted everything towards the kitchen, which I'll go over in a second. Coming over here, we've got a wood stove. We decided to go with a full-size wood stove because when you see a lot of those cubic minis or whatever they're called, you have to wonder how often are people putting wood into those wood stoves. And we're in Canada, we have winter here for four or five months. Well, actually, I guess we use the stove like seven months. It's probably seven months, yeah. We're so, using it right now and it's June because it's rainy and cold outside. Yeah, so we wanted to have a proper wood stove in here. Um, it's rated for 1,100 square feet. And because we're in a bus, you know, the insulation and heat doesn't stay in here as well. So Windows. Like, this wood stove is just enough. <laughs> yeah. Really. That being said, we are very comfortable in the wintertime. Oh, yeah. 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 We're always comfortable. But I do have to get up every single night once in the winter to fill the wood stove. Yeah. And actually, we have one of these heat powered fans and we didn't we got that after we were in here for a few months and that was a game changer because the back of the bus was freezing and out here was super comfortable so that is a good thing to have good investment and we also have a this um gate here because with the dogs they're always running around and they Singe. we didn't want them to get burnt they so. did they, it happened <laughs> yeah so yeah, that's another thing. If you've got do dogs in a bus and a wood stove, that's the way to go. Now I knew it's, you like that wood stove? Yeah. So across from the wood stove, we have our couch. This folds out into a bed for visitors. And there's also storage underneath. And actually, you may have noticed in some of our other videos, we have a gigantic RV on our property. So that's actually our guest accommodation. So we don't use this for a bed, really. So this is our kitchen. It's actually a fair size for a school bus. I believe from here to there is about nine feet long. Um, we have an RV stove. Uh, we did have a 12 volt chest style fridge in here, fridge and freezer combo, um, but it broke and they didn't uh, help us out getting it fixed so I gotta buy a really expensive part to fix it haven't done it yet because COVID can't get things over the border very easily different story uh, so yeah this is I did this beautiful countertop thinking that I would be living in here for a long time it is red oak lace wood and I can't remember but um, it's beautiful wood and I'm glad that it's stood up so long because I'm not a finishing carpenter so yeah I'm happy about that um Craigslist we found this big sink uh, which I figured was way too big for my tiny house but this thing is awesome because up until now really we've been on a limited water source and this is a good area to wash dishes and this is a perfect area to dry them considering the layout of of the kitchen we don't have to immediately put away dishes we can let them dry on their own and then we can put them away after so this sink has been awesome um of course they're running water and it's we've got hot water we've got a hot water on demand heater in the in the back and uh yeah that's our kitchen here this is our drinking water simple stuff this is where we keep pretty much all of our our kitchen utensils um plates cups um, pots and pans, Tupperware, miscellaneous bowls, and really, it's not that bad. Um, you don't need a whole bunch of stuff in a kitchen, at least we don't. I never feel like I'm searching for something to cook with. We always have enough. We have a couple pans and a couple pots that we use, and that's good enough for Kitty and I. And we've cooked for many people here, and it's, uh, it's really not a big deal for us, so... Um, we have so we have lighting so in this bus. I have a 12 volt Lighting so this is running straight off of our battery bank um, And then we also have this strip lighting which is actually kind of a power hog But it sure makes a lot of a difference in here. We're having just a little bit of color in the in the ceiling so uh, And then we've got this Max fan which uh, we've got two of them. We've got one here for when we're cooking and we've got one in the bathroom 
for anyone who's thinking of building and who wants a wood stove, if you have one of these and you have a wood stove, you have to have a window open or you will completely smoke out your bus. Whether it's a cubic mini, whether it's a full size wood stove. All right, so across from the kitchen, we have my workstation. I was going to school full time when we moved out here, so I needed a desk that I could do homework and study and whatever. Um, so we originally planned to take that out and have a little dinette table, but we never got around to it and now I'm working from home, so it's worked out really well. Um, we've also got a couple storage cabinets for tea, wine glasses, coffee, we've got spices and tea towels and whatever, dog food bowls. So here we've got our power closet. Um, we've got a brand new inverter, which we'll go over in a different video. And we've also kind of gone over our whole solar setup in a video, which we'll link above. We're 24 volt now. So then on this side, we've got our closet, we've got Grace clothes, my clothes, more, more of my clothes and towels and other random stuff. And so down here, we've got a RV furnace and we use it right now and it's kind of the shoulder season and it's too warm to have a fire or, but we still need a little bit of heat just to take the chill off. So that comes out here, it comes out under the computer and then also in the bathroom. So then moving further back, we've got our bedroom. Uh, we've got a double bed in here and that's all I can really say about that. Oh, I think you can say more. <laughs> Are you looking forward to a queen size bed? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's we're we're not very big people, and this isn't that bad. But and it's comfy, and you know, if we get mad at each other, we can, you know, separate and be angry all night. But <laughs> <laughs> but, I usually hide under the blankets when I'm mad at him. And there you go. Need to, some space. Yeah. So here we've got a little TV. This was a recent purchase because we've been watching Netflix on our phones for quite a long time and we're not big TV people like we're outside doing stuff when it's not raining like this so we decided to just tuck it away in the bedroom because we usually watch half an hour before we go to sleep um, so yeah it's a nice little treat to have that after using our phones for so long yeah and then we have a laundry basket down below and I'm gonna just show you this is where I sleep and if I pull this back that's my view. It's beautiful. It's nice sleeping right next to the window, except for in the winter when we put up Reflectex. So down here we've got access to under the bed. Uh, we've got more extra sheets and camera gear, and we also have Reflectex. This stuff is a lifesaver in the winter. Um, the bus windows are single pane and they're actually quite drafty. Like we've had wind storms where you can feel wind coming, coming through in. the windows. Yeah. So, and our, was it our first winter or the whole, almost the whole winter? <laughs> Just half the winter, but. Yeah, so <laughs> half of the, our first winter in the bus, we didn't use this. And you know, it was chilly yeah. sometimes, you know, the wood stove wasn't quite enough to go through the night, so it'd be cold at like three in the morning. And um, and the first night that we put this up, I think it was minus 20, yeah. and we put this up and we were just like, oh in my God. Five minutes. What have we been doing this whole time? <laughs> That's how we also felt when we put skirting on the bus this w last winter. <laughs> so next to our bed, we have our bathroom. We've got a little sink in here. We've got a full-size shower. Um, it's this kind of shower head. It's awesome. It's better than any rental we've ever had. <laughs> I love this shower. Especially with the light in there. It's so nice. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a couple towel hooks here for one for each of us. Extra storage. And so on this side of the bathroom, we have our composting toilet. And we made a video about that already. So. We will link it above. Um, feel free to check it out if that interests you. So on the back side of this wall and on the back side of the shower, we have a utility room. 
And that was actually the one mistake I made with this bus because it has a lot of unused space. Though it's not that much really when you look at it, but the first problem is ventilation. If you build a bus and you live in a cold climate, the heat source needs to be able to go through the whole bus and there needs to be proper ventilation because we've had issues with mold back there. We've had issues with condensation and, uh, and it's, you know, we will show you it in this video, but it is very unfinished and it's pretty dirty right now, but it's where we keep our propane tank for our hot water heater and our, um, our furnace. So this is the back of the bus. This is the bedroom here. That's the bathroom there. We have a real water pump. Don't bother with those little teeny uh, RV pumps because they will fail on you eventually. This thing is the real deal. It takes a lot of power, but it doesn't take a lot of power for very long. So it's not that big of an issue. It takes about 700 watts, for about 15 seconds every minute because of the 20 liter um, accumulator, I mean, the uh, compressing tank. Accumulator tank, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, we got some filters from our water that comes from outside into here, and then it goes into there, and then it goes into, we've got their old RV pressure tank, accumulator tank, that's what they're called, sorry, the old RV accumulator tank that we used to use, we just left it in there. Manifold that goes to all the different, uh, the, both of the sinks and the uh, shower. I've got just a little utility line coming out of here that I can plug a hose into. Um, any plumber is gonna find that disgusting to look at. And then we have the eco temp, hot water on demand. That thing is the bee's knees. If you need, if you're planning on building a bus, get that. That is an amazing piece of equipment. Um, like I said, this is our propane for our hot water heater and propane line goes all the way underneath there to the furnace and yeah not much to see back here it's not finished I didn't even get the ceiling on in here so yeah anyway that's the back of the bus not much to see thanks for watching our video we've enjoyed making these videos and give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it too it really it helps our channel grow really helps our channel that, grow uh, interaction we want to thank everyone who's subscribed so far um, it's it's validating I suppose to see so many subscribers so quickly in our in our journey so yeah. see you next time